Fellow Warriors, how's going? This is Kassan. Welcome back to Dusty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends. After finishing the Alchon and Lubu, now it's time to do the final trio's story. The Alchon, Lubu and Donjo. Finishing with the leader Donjo, the fat pig that everybody wants to kill, even angels on the sky. And I guess it's time to go. Of course, that... I didn't... Wow, who like it? That's not possible, guys. That's not possible. My lord, today we march. The battle is as good as won. We will show them the futility of their resistance. My lord, are you fighting for our lord's honor? I battle for the sake of battle, and fight only for myself. Our troops have taken their position. Like, I literally thought it will fight, I don't know, Yel Turban or Namman. I, I thought that would be his first stage. Uh, there, there must be really something wrong. The action was right, there is something wrong. Uh, Donjo should fight uh, a healing. That will be his first battle healing, because, uh, you know, healing, uh, he was an hero. Okay. No, okay, maybe Donjo's first battle should actually be a yield turn, no jokes apart. Uh, it will make sense if Donjo's first battle will be a yield turn, because that's, that, that was indeed, uh, sort of, well, not his first battle, but it was the battle where he tried to gain power but failed miserably because he got beaten up by the Yale Turbans, like, very badly, and, yeah, he literally failed badly, <laughs> very, very badly, so, it, it does make sense if, if it will start a Yale Turban, actually. The Yellow Turban Rebellion had been quelled through the valiant efforts of the Imperial Army, but the land still remains in chaos. It is here that the savior Dong Zhuo arrives from Ziliang and brings order back to the land. After his heroic rescue of the young Han Emperor, Dong Zhuo entered the capital of Luoyang and was given full responsibility over military affairs. Furthermore, Dong Zhuo enlisted the mighty Lu Bu into his service and soon gained tremendous political influence through awesome military power. Regional leaders were extremely jealous of Dong Zhuo's accomplishments. And when Cao Cao called upon them to take up arms and remove Dong Zhuo from power, they immediately responded. It was here the anti-Dong Zhuo coalition army was formed, with Wan Shao serving as supreme commander. In the year 191, the anti-Dong Zhuo alliance marched on Luoyang. Dong Zhuo, seeking to vanquish those who would stand against him, stationed himself at the indomitable Hulao Gate. Within the ranks, the figures of Lu Bu and Biao Chan could also be seen. At least I'm glad the narrator says that they were jealous. No, they were like uh, trying to save the realm, uh, trying to rescue the emperor. No, the narrator at least uh, says that they were jealous of Donjo because that was that's what lit the the truth behind. It. Open the gate! <laughs> oh my god! Open the fucking gate! I wonder if the I don't think it's still here. The the power up. I think they changed the position, but I'll, I'll still double check. You never know. Yeah. Unfortunately, they, they have changed the position of the power-ups. I don't know now where they are. Now I can be asked, to be honest, looking on a guide and finding out where, where the pods are, really. But yeah, they, they wouldn't feel jealous, obviously, of Donjo's power because Donjo arrived, he took the Emperor, he gained lots of power under the court. Like, of course, the other lords weren't very happy about it. Like, uh, they were like, how, like... How does don't you deserve to be uh, to be there? I shall be there, not him. This is something that Liu Bei says it in the Romans of Three Kingdoms a drama 2010, where that was actually one of my favorite parts when he says in this cause um, with Cao Cao. I really think that's probably one of the best parts ever of the drama. Literally, Liu Bei sits and discuss like. Like proper men, like not like rivals, like proper men, like proper friends. Tell someone you bay. 
they were like, uh, okay, so what should we do, brother? How, how do we defeat Donjo? Uh, uh, how do you, what do you think is good to bring the, the realm to peace? Then the Tsar mentioned chaos. Liu Bei say that chaos is bad, but then Tsar says that we should abuse the chaos because without the chaos, me and you will be nobodies. Then Yubei was like, I, feel, I think you live for the chaos, uh, Lord Cao Cao. So I, I think it's very interesting how they they discuss about plans, about uh, what they're going to become one day. But it's true, to be honest. Uh, without the chaos, without the, all this world, Yubei will be a nobody. <laughs> it is so true. Yubei will never become an emperor if it wasn't for the chaos. It is, in, it is a very true fact. Even Cao Cao will be a nobody. So... If there was no chaos, nobody will, will achieve glory. Nobody will recognize will be recognized. Lubu won't be recognized. Uh, you know, nobody will be recognized. Like strong officers like Jin Liao, Sun Jian, you know, all these people, we will know them if it wasn't for the chaos. Like and maybe we won't even know Muso games. Well, nasty words at least. We, we will know. Imagine like what will happen if everybody lived in peace and harmony? Maybe I will be interested in other things like literature and uh, poetry. I will probably even start studying 24 7. In, and, uh, but in the books, you never know what will happen if if uh, the, the three kingdoms never care, came over uh, into our onto your lives but well there was uh, there's always a single good jedi period of samurai warriors which uh, i'm more passionate about that than three kingdoms so but it that's pretty much the same topic no naga will become will have been like a nobody if it wasn't for you know yoshimoto becoming someone somebody you never know really because yoshimoto became powerful okay you, uh, nobunaga wanted to to kill yoshimoto but what if uh, what if there was somebody else at Yoshimuro's place, someone smarter, like Shingen? But obviously, Shingen won't be taken down by Nobunaga. There's no way that could have happened. So you never know. See, uh, these things makes you wonder. Or if Yoshimoto out managed to outsmart Nobunaga because Yoshimoto uh, wasn't as smart as other Damios. He was powerful. Yeah, he was the strongest uh, Damios during that time. But um, he actually fell for it. He fell for Nobunaga's uh, raid. Face me if you dare. Take this. He fell for Nobunaga's raid at Hoki Azuma, so that was uh, pretty much pretty much stupid. But. What if somebody like what if Yoshimoto all of a sudden he realized uh, earlier about Nobunaga's strength? You never know. See those things. You never you never know what happen. Who will happen? Feel the power of the blue dragon. Maybe Yoshimoto will be in, will, will become the just as powerful as Nobunaga, but Nobunaga was really one of a kind. Like really. Totally one of a kind, really. I feel like it's sort of destiny. The, that should have happened. I don't know, sometimes I feel it's that. Because I can't imagine, um, like, a story without Nobunaga becoming powerful. You have not seen the last of me. Farewell. It's just awesome, really. To what happened uh, to Nobunaga. Well, not awesome, because he became a bad person later on, but... It's, it's still awesome about the ideals he had of not shutting down Japan like Tokugawa Shogun did. Because Ieyasu, when he became a Shogun, he, he closed he closed Japan to to the Western, to the Westerns. He just had this obsession of like uh, closing the borders for some reason because he just didn't want the West influence. Uh, in Japan, for some reason, because I don't know, maybe he was scared that they will become too powerful one day. They will overcome Japan, or they will like influence Japanese culture. Well, Japanese culture today is extremely strong, so that didn't happen. And the West influence is also strong. I, be I believe it's strong in Japan too. So, but obviously the. They have the generations of traditions of the samurai. People still dress as samurai even today. So 
to do parades, lots of parades about um It is for my people that I will exist. Like they they have, they have a parade of Yoshitsugo Tani um like a balloon, a big balloon, a big statue of Yoshitsugo Tani, a parade of him in in his uh in his hometown, in Ishitsugo town, his hometown, they do parades of him with his uh, big statue figure. So uh, this is to show, but not just Ishitsugo, of other, other, many others, um, important uh, samurais of, of during that era. Uh, it's just normal, really. So that they still respect their their traditions. Like it's cool how they respect the traditions. How they they are very close to even to the Sengoku Jidai period ended. They're very close to it. They're still very attached in it. I think it's a good thing. Oh wow, they're attached to a period of of war and uh, period of war, period of suffering. But it's not they're attached to that. They're attached to the to the code of the samurai, to the honor of the samurai, all those values that the samurai had. Uh, because they were good things, they were positive things. A samurai uh, lived by a code, and that code, uh, it's obviously pretty positive. They have, well, obviously, they have honor, sense of justice, duty, and many other stuff. The one shall rule this era. Respect for the Lord, so... Loyalty, you know, it's... It's actually quite good. So this is why the tradition of the samurais are still very active. Very active today. Not just because we are just because we are a war doesn't mean that someone doesn't have to exist. The someone is just a figure in the end. Like uh, it represents how a man should be. It's not the uh, oh someone well. One family. Prosper. Yeah, the someone was born like in a time of war, but that's another story. <laughs> I guess. I guess he was born in a time of war. Now I'm not an expert of an historian, an, an historian, but I suppose. Oh no, cause uh, you lie. You know too much. No, no, I don't know anything. I don't know anything really. I just know a few things. Oh no, you know. Do you know a lot? Uh, you seem to know a lot. I don't know what you're talking about. No, trust me, I don't know anything. If I if I knew a lot uh, I, at this time. Uh, uh, if you want me to be honest, I won't be here making videos. I will be in, in Japan in a new university writing books. If I knew that much, trust me. Because uh, to do to know like that much, you need to know like every single thing. Like you need to know uh, literally how samurai took a shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's how bad you need to know. How badly you need to know about uh, ab about those things to be considered like a. An historian, an historian, like uh, a true man of culture. Like you need to know about small details, how how the certain armed guard parts is called, how certain weapons are called, what kind. You need to recognize certain spears, certain type of naginata, certain type of katanas. You need to recognize uh, all these things. You need to know the the details, how to commit se seppuku. Well, I do, do, do know that, but do not try home. <laughs> do, do not do seppuku, please, please. Uh, do not Google how to do it, please. I'm begging you. So, guys, don't do that. Do it for me. <laughs> Every time you, you think about committing seppuku, think, Kese Muso told you not to, okay? Okay. <laughs> so, don't do that, <laughs> please. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just a simple. Really, <laughs> it's just that simple. It's not that simple because it hurts, but uh, it, it does hurt. Hurt a lot, I guess. And I'll try it. I don't want to. <laughs> well, seppuku in the end. About the seppuku, it was just like, a, uh, what can I say? I can't find the right word. Was it like a way to display? Uh, yeah, like to. They think seppuku was a way to, uh, you know. Uh, what's the word? Pay back for your crimes? Pay back for your incompetence or something? Yeah, that was... Or probably showing... Displaying your honor. Displaying that you won't bow before anyone. What the... Whoa, 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 what's going on? <laughs> oh my god. Sansa, what are you doing? Top of the tower. <laughs> Sansa is like having a party, a rave uh, in Sea Gate. In Fan Shui Gate. Oh my god. Tata, no time to have drinks on Fang Shui Gate. You need to come in and fight me like a like a man. So that's what Seppuku basically represented. Like uh, if somebody committed a crime or a mistake, for example, Nobunaga's teacher, uh, he was called uh, Matsunaga. 
Yeah, like he said, the Matsunaga was called. I don't remember the name. Uh, his name was Matsunaga. Idehi, I guess, Idehi Matsunaga, I don't remember the name, Nobunaga's teacher, he was supposed to be Nobunaga's teacher. Uh, when he saw that Nobunaga was a fool, Nobunaga became a leader of the... Leader of the Oda, leader of the Oda clan, they saw he was a fool. Matsunaga uh, commits seppuku because uh, Nobunaga basically was still acting like a fool, even because after becoming the, the rule of the Oda clan, he, he acted like a fool. The fool of Hawari, so... And... That's what happened. He, he killed himself because he failed. Uh, they, he thought he failed uh, to uh, educate Nobunaga. <laughs> so I think he was forced to. This is Luxury Gate, by the way. Remember, he was forced to commit suicide. But he, well, he was driving in to commit suicide. Se seppuku, basically. So that's what he did. Like I say, seppuku is also a form of um, when you, you 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 can't do anything right. You do commit seppuku. So. But I guess that was pretty obvious, so... You don't just commit seppuku because they order you to, like, yeah, Hideyoshi, Nobunaga... Uh, order to commit seppuku to many people. So... Same for... Same for uh, Ieyasu, of course. So, yeah. <laughs> That's how it was, really. Instead of like putting men to death, they will literally force them to kill themselves instead. Like that was pretty cruel. Because they were that lazy. Do not think this is the end. I'll be they were literally that lazy to bother with somebody. To literally tell them, just please kill yourself, I don't wanna bother with you. That that's basically was a seppuku before. That's how it was. So and yeah, if that person will come in seppuku, obviously they will come and deal with it. <laughs> themselves so yeah uh, that, that's pretty much how it was I guess I think like I said I'm not an expert I'm just assuming well I'm assuming I'm just like assuming from what I saw from what I read what I watched you know I'm not like no expert of expert history but I'll try my best to at least uh, put some knowledge into your uh, heads I, I hope I can do that but Cow, cow! Is this how you choose to repay my generosity? Is there something wrong? Cow, cow. Alright, we're here for Guandu, the final battle against Coco. Let's see. Same as always, this is the third time and the last time I'm gonna fight uh, this stage, for the story mode, of course. The Battle of Hulao Gate ends in victory for Dong Zhuo, thanks to his leadership and to the tremendous efforts of Rubu and Diao Chan. Having lost their leader, Wan Shao, the anti-Dong Zhuo alliance crumbles and its members return to their territories in defeat. After Wan Shao's death, Cao Cao seizes control of his former territories in the Hebei region and gains tremendous power in the north. Still determined to wrest political power from Dong Zhuo, Cao Cao begins a campaign south and marches with his army toward Luoyang at a furious pace. In the year 200, Dong Zhuo camps his army at Guangdu to confront Cao Cao's army that has crossed the Huang River. Dong Zhuo will now have to match his intellect against Cao Cao's in a battle for control of the central plains. Well, let's see if it's a fight between intellects, then I don't see how South Cao could lose, but for some reason, Dong Zhuo is smarter than South Cao on here, at least. So, in Extreme Legends, remember, in Extreme Legends, even a peon can be smarter than, than Zhuge Liang. Let's not forget that. The shovel like, I made a, a, a muso mode for you know the pounds through troops. <laughs> you, you imagine how old that would be? <laughs> the private that gets recruited and then he ranks up as a surgeon, then as a major, then as a an elite that get captain, then to sub officer. Oh my god, that would be awesome! <laughs> it, it seems like a potential 
uh, extreme mode for Dusty Wars 3 because we never got an extreme mode for Dusty Wars 3, but if there would be an extreme mode, I will imagine it like that. Like you, you start with a pair of moves and then then upgrading and ranking up. That's a mood that, that, that I want to see personally. <laughs> I know it will be crazy having a mood like that, but come on, man. Destiny mode in Dynasty Warriors 5 sort of. Uh, it's sort of done that, but it is kind of different. Like, mm, you're still an, an Eddie Carter. You you get you can buy uh, com the, the combos, the moves. You start you start first with this, one two, like this, yeah, one two, B basically like this, one two. One two. You can only do this in Destiny mode at, at the beginning. One two, one two. So that's so that's so bad. You don't even have charge attacks and so you can do this. One two. This is what you can do. One two, one two. Like that was absolutely a perfect mode in my opinion because it shows the evolution of your character of your warrior. I love it. And I really hope they can seriously bring up bring that mode back because it does sounds absolutely amazing. One okay, let's do this is destiny mode. <laughs> one two. I'm only doing this. One two one two. Let's pretend it's destiny mode. <laughs> oh my god. Gave up the combos just to show you guys. I call got a plus two defense, but I can't because I'm just a peon and so I pre I'm pretending to be a peon actually. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, I will really wish that Destiny mode can can come back one day. Because that mode was amazing. I don't understand why it did, they're not bringing it back. With so much potential, why are they not bringing it back? Really? They could have any Dusty Wars 9, you know. Maybe the Empires. Well, I don't think so. He doesn't fit for an Empires game in the end, but... The Empires is Empires where you capture turtles and shit. Well, Destiny mode, you just play stages, uh, serving under uh, an, an officer of your choice. The rest of the mobile game of Dusty World is not, you know, the show is made, uh, lets you make your your own character. I don't see why they, they, they don't make you make your own character. I think it's quite stupid. Im imagine if you can make your own character in that game. That would be awesome. There was a mobile game uh, where you could make your own character. <laughs> Of Dusty Warriors, it's called uh, Dusty Warriors slash, but I don't think it's only in Japanese, and I, I don't know if it's still on. It probably shut it down. And uh, really, like, come on, the show like you know made it like a more we can create your own officer because in the end we always see the the same characters in the end, so. We all know the characters, the characters of Dynasty Warriors. It would be nice to see, to see it from a, a perspective from your own character, you know, instead of the characters that we know already. Oh my God, these archers! Because <sighs> we know, we all know that uh, the characters introduced. Apparently, there are 60 characters included. The, the rest of the characters will be included in updates. But no point because they're. There will be, uh, we will know anyway, we will know about these characters introduced, so I really don't understand. My, I don't get at all. I just wish maybe if, you know, they could do, okay, I'm not gonna lie, but I will not mind if they do something like Fire Emblem Heroes, you know, the mobile, the shit mobile gacha game that it is, but it does have some good, some good heart design. That game if they can make alternative costumes yeah I know they even say they won't have a swimsuit uh, because it will ruin the atmosphere that's what I said but in the end uh, it's just a fucking mobile game who cares about the atmosphere like really well a Musa mobile game seems fun something I will play but I hate gotcha games because I, I don't know like spending infinite money and then the, the, the game will shut down one day uh, it's just no, like no, like come on. 
because one day the game will die. They must should, they, there's high chances they will shut down mobile games like it happens. It, it's, it's pretty common for mo mobile games and online games uh, to be shut down. Uh, that's just how it is, really. Every party comes to an end, so... So yeah, and... Mobile games will, will be shut down, like always. Like it happened with many Musou mobile games. Every mobile game of last year got shut down. No one got saved, and I'm pretty sure this one will be shut down too one day, but... So this is why spending money for for mobile games is pointless, because they're gonna be shut down anyway. Like Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts uh, uh, Union got shut down, and people literally spend their fortune on that game. You're not gonna lie, I also spent quite, quite some money, I probably spent around 100 euros, but that's it. That, that, that's not much, trust me, compared to what people spend. Yeah, max spend on that Kingdom Hearts mobile game, it's uh, probably, I think, uh, either 50, 80, or 50, 80, or 100 euros. That's how much I spent. That's how much I spent, max. I'm not spend more than that. I can, I can assure you, but... It's not too bad, like I said, because some people reach to spend thousands and thousands. This battlefield will be your last. Thousand, thousand, thousand of bugs. What? But you, but you just rushed there. What the fuck, man? I'm well, I made you rush. Oh my god, really? <laughs> I made him rush to. What the hell? That was okay. That, that was amazing. Especially the way a Dojo Cross was. There is no glory to be won from this battle. Why not? <laughs> help, help, nobody. Jean is trying to convert me. <laughs> I think Jean was trying to convert him or something to his beauty standards. So this is why he actually, he actually this is how it happened. Donjo rushed to Jeanne, thinking he was a woman, which he actually happens in Water Sorochi 3. He, he kidnaps Jeanne, he kidnaps Jeanne thinking uh, it's a woman. Donjo uh, f told Jeanne was a woman and uh, uh, Jeanne told him I'm a man, I'm a beautiful man. And then Donjo's like, help, help, can somebody help me? I think this is how it re actually happened. They should actually make a dialogue about that. I don't know why they, they missed this opportunity, really. Can you imagine? The, if they had that, that would have been one of the funniest uh, thing ever in this game, really. It will be worth playing the game just because of that. <laughs> help! Help! Somebody help me! Okay. Thank you. No, seriously though, Don't just so can be quite good if you spam it. With Ellie's in a special- Oh my god, his archers! Archers everywhere I go on, do I hate it? I really hate Gwandu because of this. There's too many arches, man. See, look everywhere! But they're only towers, that's the problem. I really. Oh. And so, we concludes another part that we all seen. This, I, I promise you guys that this is going to be the last story that's going to be sort of cloned, because you guys have already saw these stages and, and blah blah blah. Because, you know, uh, same old story, Donjo, Lubo and Diacho, and they're in the same faction, so they obviously uh, share the stories, but don't worry, it'll be, it'll be, diff it'll be different in the next stories anyway, so... Some mistakes should be different too. So don't worry. Right. Fellow Warriors, and I guess this is everything for now, and I'll catch you guys to the next episode. As always, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys to the next episode. Consider becoming a member of my channel to access exclusive perks. Subscribe to my channel for people obsessive, and I'll see you guys to the next episode, Fellow Warriors. Take care, and stay tuned.